We had this fantastic asset within St Melitis, uh, this wonderful organ that was broken beyond repair and we knew we'd need to raise some money. A bunch of us got together and said, look, we've got to try and save this organ. We're in a very interesting building because it was built in 1871 by a community of Congregationalists. By the 1950s, their numbers were diminishing, and in 1959, this was handed over, bought by the Roman Catholics. And among the things we found out was that the organ that had been installed in 1920 was actually the war memorial, First World War Memorial, for the Congregationalists. But what was great about this project was it wasn't just about this wonderful instrument. It was about remembering the men that the organ memorialized. The, the first person I, whose life I researched was a soldier called Arthur James Whedon, and he was the fourth of five children. He died at the age of 34. He was serving in Betancourt at the time, and he died in quite tragic circumstances. He was actually not killed in the line of battle, but he was uh, involved in an accident with an Army Service Corps vehicle. Alfred Olford, who didn't at first appear, until we realised that he'd emigrated just before the war and actually he'd joined the Australian infantry. He suffered as a, at a gas attack and died um, near Rouen in April 1918. On the list of the soldiers who returned was a P. Alford, Percy, who's Alfred's brother. Both Alf and Percy were in that hospital in Rouen without knowing that the other one was there. And sadly, Alf died, Percy returned to his unit, and he only found out that his brother had died later on. exciting because we got this money from the National Heritage Lottery and that obviously paid for the capital works for the, for the organ to be restored but it also funded uh, a really extensive activity program built up through consultation with parishioners here but also the local community. They came up with some really fabulous ideas, for example free piano lessons. Through the project we've been able to give Joe Calder, uh, our trainee, um, some training and some work experience for six months actually in the workshop of FH Brown. doing a traineeship working at FH Brown & Sons which is funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund. Before I was doing uh, AutoCAD design work in an office so this is a bit more practical and I thought it was a lot like what I should be doing. These are just general organ building skills that um, Joe's been picking up over the last few months and the idea is for Joe to after the six months to carry on organ building. All the pneumatic parts, the leather, um, were totally worn, worn out. We, we had to take most of the bits back to the workshop, the bellows, um, recovering um, new, new leather work. Um, and, and gradually we, we began to hear the instrument as we were putting the pipe work back in, um, hearing the stops really for the first time. <laughs> sitting here now where I had um, some of my wedding photographs taken with Aileen, my wife. I'm looking forward to hearing the next time there's a wedding held here with the refurbished organ because it's, by all accounts, going to sound ten times as powerful. Even the present congregation won't ever have heard the organ at full capacity. Many of them will have moved into the area in recent years and won't even have heard it. So I think it's going to be a stunning um, moment of revelation when they do hear it. I think it'll bring the whole thing to life. It'll bring the whole thing to life. Um, it means a huge amount. Mm -hmm.